All right, guys. So we'll start off with our first part of our actual practical variable analysis in Excel, and this one we'll be using a data set for failed hydraulic cylinder data. Um, this one is taking off some um, hydraulic excavators, and the cylinders have all failed in a sort of leaking state. And as you can see here, we've got both the hours and the state of our data, which is either censored or, sorry, right censored or uh, complete, which is failed for F, or suspended, which means it's still in operation. So to conduct our wavelength analysis, we'll, um, we'll first do a bit of data manipulation here. And the way we do that is we're going to start by assigning ranks and reverse ranks to our um, hydraulic cylinder data. So what you want to do is you want to actually start um, rank uh, sorting the data from low to high in terms of hours. So we'll go to data, we'll go to um, sort, we'll expand the selection, and we'll sort by hours, smallest to largest. <clears throat> cool. Now I'm going to make a new column here, we'll call it rank, I'll call here reverse rank. So rank will just go one, two, and expand. And you can see here we've got well, got 283 sets of data, bunch of data, and then we'll just reverse rank that back up. Don't judge me for not using uh, oop, for not using a ridiculous amount of Excel shortcuts. Sorry, I did that wrong. <laughs> 280, 283, 282, and then we'll just track that one down. My bad. It's Monday morning. All right, cool, wonderful. Now. What you have to bear in mind is that because we actually um, we have suspend data in there, you have to remember that when you're doing a variable plot, the actual plots, the plot points that make it to the plot, oh sorry, the the graph are only failed data points. Like the suspended data doesn't actually make it to um, the plot we have up here. So these are just failure data, and the suspended data doesn't actually make it. But the suspended data, so the the components that haven't failed do affect your rank and how your failed data is treated. That's why it's so important to include suspended data as well, because it actually um, it uh, it influences your final result. And to do that, there's um, a Kaplan-Meier adjusted ranks method that we use for suspended data, and to to ensure that works. You can only do that on failed data. So yes, that's why we did our rank and reverse rank, because what we're gonna do now is we're only gonna apply to failed data or adjusted rank. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna filter our data here. We're going to only select so we're going to select suspended data first only because we're going to delete them and we're going to shift all the way to the end then we're going to delete the rows and then we're going to go back to just failed data because we should only have failed data left so you'll see here like i've deleted all the suspended data but our ranks and reverse ranks that we did initially have still stayed the same or wider location were, was. See here how we're sitting at um, 139, going to 142. So there's some suspended data in between there, but we need to keep these original ranks because that will basically influence our adjusted rank that we'll calculate right now. So the Kaplan Meyer, um, the Kaplan Meyer adjusted ranks are from this formula over here, 
And if you want to start your, your formula on here, because it uses the previous one, we just start the first one at one. So our first data point at 500 hours, we'll just put the adjusted rank at one. And the actual formula in itself will just um, put in and drag through. So we're using basically our previous adjusted rank. So number one plus the amount of data points we have in our data set. So we have 283 data, set, data points. So we just add one, which is why we have 284. And we minus again our previous data point here. Then we divide that by one plus M and M. M is basically our current reverse rank. That's what it is. So we'll just enter in this formula over here. So we'll go equals this minus or no plus this plus two eighty four minus this link over one plus here. Let's just double check that that's correct. So one plus that, plus and minus, good to go. And then what we'll do is we'll just copy that formula across all the way down. And you'll see that in our original data set, we actually just had failed data at the start anyway. We didn't have any suspended data. So our adjusted rank really just stays the same until we start getting suspended data later and here it starts changing our adjusted rank because we've had after this point we get some suspended data points in between and you'll see that our rank is is adjusted for that so that's what the goal was is to put a new rank in because of our suspended data so now let's move on so now we've got our adjusted ranks from Kaplan Meyer. we calculate what's called the median rank regression so a median rank regression is um it's basically how we start calculating our, our parameters and our plots. And we do that using something that's called Bernard's approximation. Bernard's approximation, it's a very simple formula. It basically means it's J minus 0.3 and plus 0.4. And it's important to note that your median rank, just like before, just like our adjusted rank, should be calculated only using the failed cylinder data. Only the failed data makes on onto the viable plot. So that's what we're working with right now. So N we know is 283. Um, J is going to just be your adjusted rank, right? So it's J minus 0.3. What's the median rank here? Equals so it was J minus 0.3 over 0.4. So that's our median rank. And we'll copy that one down. Cool. So remember what we covered in, we wanted that linear line and linear expression. Um, for plotting a y bull plot. And if we go back up here, we'll cover that again. Um, here we go. It's taking two natural logs of our y axis and just a single log of time for our x axis. Um, and that's the plot that gives you, that's the sort of formula that gives you that straight line, right? Because it's in the y it equals mx plus b um, format. And the way we do that is, we're going to do first ln the lateral log of time, which is simply just the hours. So I like to sort of spell these out so I know what I'm plotting. So I'll go ln t and equals natural log of my hours, which is time, right? Done. Cool. And the second one is your double natural logarithm of one over one minus your failure function. So <clears throat> let's do that. So that's ln ln one and you have to be you have to be quite careful with how you align your brackets here. Um, failure function. Uh, 
two. It's a lot to it's a lot to type in. I know. I understand. So you close natural log, natural log of one over one minus ft median rank. Close those out and drag across. So now we really have the two things we're plotting for our liable function, right? So if I just go ahead and select these two, um, insert my um, my scatter plot. This is this is the Weibull plot, but if you want the line itself, we'll click on the data, right click, add trend line, and we're gonna actually set display R squared value on chart and display equation on chart as well, because you wanna see what those parameters are. And let's move that across, probably make it um make that a solid line with a, a nice orange color so you can see no I guess it doesn't uh I guess it doesn't want to be a solid line does it Weird. It works that way. <laughs> so what you want to remember is, is that I've got my equation here and we we know that beta, beta is straight from the, the equation. It's our rate of change, which is in front of the x of our equation. So our beta is 2.0303, which is larger than 1, which gives us an indication that this is a, an increasing failure rate. But before we go into that, we'll see that look, look, we've got we've got a data, it fits the line reasonably well. And if you want to get an indication, you just right click this again and we'll go to um go to select my data. Um my R squared value, I just want that one displayed in here. I'm not quite sure. Oh, yeah, sorry, it was there the entire time. Um and add a trend line. My Excel's not liking me today, is it? There you go. So I've got an R squared value of 0.9763, which means that there's a it's it's R squared of one means that there's a perfect fit in there. So the closer you get to one, the better your data fits your turn line. So we've got a 97% goodness of fit there, which is really quite good. So we can be quite confident that our viable uh, parameters here will be an accurate representation of um, the failure data we have. And sorry, to calculate our characteristic life eta, we'll go back to our... Um, our formula up here um, for calculating at a, oh, where did I put that one? So eta is basically the exponential of our B functions, which is our um, Y intercept negative over our um, beta value. And that's the characteristic life. And what that indicates is the point at which 63 point, um, 63 point yeah, 63.2% of our cylinders have failed. So we'll go up here. We'll go equals exponential. So minus 18 is our B. So minus of minus 18 is just 18. 0.208 over our beta value. And that's our add value. So at 7,800 hours, 63.2% of our hydraulic cylinders would have failed. And those are the basic parameters we have right now from our Weibull analysis. And basically, 
it's um, it's a good fit, so it's an accurate representation, right? So as I discussed, beta is bigger than one. We've got a beta of 2.03, which means we're here, sending in our wear out failures. Um, our characteristic life um, is almost equal to our, our mean of our distribution, which is 78.48. So if you were to do no further optimization analysis, um, you were in a rush and you just needed a number that was reasonably estimated, that should be around the time where you do maintenance. Um, but to get the optimum hours, we'll cover that in a, in a little section out there. But now we'll just move on to, um, in the next video, we'll move on to actually how we get our Weibull analysis plots and reliability functions, which um, uh, requires a bit of uh, manipulation, but we'll cover that right now.